Good morning, Frida. Frida Reba Darcy and Patricia O'Connor here, and it is a 50 degree, foggy, foggy, otherwise, otherwise sunny morning. I'm still in my, uh, I'm still in my uh, pajamas, but I thought it would be uh, a good opportunity to do a little show and tell in regards to our weather. This is, uh, it's starting to burn off a little bit. Just a few minutes ago, you, uh, it was quite a bit thicker, but it's, that actually is, today's actually a sunny day. It's just, uh, we're socked in by fog. Probably burn off by, uh, by 11 o'clock. And, uh, but it's warm again, it's still warm. The trees are all just waking up, most of them show signs of where they've been getting some form of moisture since since the early morning and you can kind of see that the soil is still damp from where that got watered yesterday and that got watered yesterday and that's another little look at the Kodaheim the Kodaheim maple forest I'm really looking forward to uh to watching this guy come out this year. Not miss an opportunity to give the Bougainvillea a little water and to give the Cypress a little water. And we'll give, we'll give our um, Wisterias a little water. We'll give that Wisteria a little water. I'm going to take I'm going to take this one out of its dish. Oops, be careful, Pat. I'm gonna take this one out of its dish for the moment. Let's see, maybe I should put it here. I don't want it uh, sit laying in that water for that long. It doesn't, it's okay to do that in the summer months. I don't know that that's okay to do that in the winter months. I don't think it would, I don't think it would kill it but it's not necessary to do that and it's not that water wasn't evaporating off soon enough to for this to just not get fuller and fuller and turn nasty so i'll pour that out later anyway um i'm finally 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 almost back to zero it hung on my uh dawn redwood hung on this is the last little bit of foliage that it put out uh, at the end of August after we had some some dieback. So it just kept this up until a few weeks ago. Uh, this is not a defoliation. All of this stuff is already dead. It's just it's just hanging on to the tree, but it's dead. So yeah. Anyway, that's got that. Our oak tree loves weather like this, and you can see the soil is still damp. We won't need to water that. We're gonna take a little look here at our pine, our Japanese black pine. And I think I've been able to see for um, a second now, but hopefully the camera is picked up that you can see the fat akadama and all of that is quite a bit damper, wetter than this stuff on top. Now, so that tells us, check it again this afternoon, check it again tomorrow. More likely, uh, we won't be watering either one of those times. Um, we like it, it's not dry, and we like it to dry out for a minute, but not too long. So sometimes with this fog, just the opposite is true. The stuff will keep rolling in and rolling in, and everything will have this damp, it'll look almost like that, except when you go underneath, it's just the opposite. You go underneath and it's, it's high and dry. I'm not gonna go digging in that little pot, but I, it would be the same. Uh, I will have to check that one again. This is my little uh, Japanese 17 year from seed because of the size of the pot is so much smaller and because um, it actually can get quite warm during the day that um, uh, I, have to, I have to check it more often and I have to make sure that the uh, pot isn't like roasting away the water inside of it because it's warm. So I have missed it that before for that reason. This is the uh, cork bark oak 
that uh, I just did my little prepare for spring cleanup on just the other day. It's back in its position and um, we're ready. I want to see more back buds come up in here and I've got, I, want, I said that last year and I got that to some extent. Uh, so it just keeps on doing that. Um, when I get more back buds, I may trim these back further. But anyway, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I'm really happy with what I've got so far. I can't say, I can hardly just say that enough. And then I'm gonna back back up into the living room to get that long leggy look at the, uh, at the Ponderosa. Um, this is just kind of, it's coasting. It doesn't, you know, to, this is almost like a summer for it. Uh, in its old location is probably still quite deep in snow where that tree just sat so well I've had it eight or nine months but anyway it um it's quite a bit warmer than what it has been used to uh I hope it likes this okay anyway and then that's the other two little the two little uh Pretty bonsai black pines underneath it. The one on the right, I need to make some styling decisions on. It's got some trunk girth to it, but it just looks, I don't know, it's a really funny, it almost looks like a primitive telephone or something. I don't really see a lot to love in those shapes so far, but I'm gonna figure something out and make a direction on that here pretty soon. It's got a lot of figure. It's, it's growing pretty good. It's putting out all kinds of shoots everywhere. Um, the sooner I can decide on a direction on that, then the better. Now, here's something. So you guys watched me, or maybe you didn't, but a lot of my, um, a lot of our subscribers will have known that I've talked for several <coughs> videos. Excuse me, I talked on several videos about uh, wanting to do some chops on this. I didn't. I, I call this a chicken's foot, and I think all of these are too long. Truthfully. I didn't like the threes. I, I don't always dislike threes, but I think all three of these are too long and too straight. And aside from there being three of them, there's not, you know, I mean, in another way of looking at it, the tree is what you make of it. If I design the structures and do everything else, it was already looking really, really pretty in the spring and the summer, but every fall and winter when it died back, I was looking at this and, and no, no matter how much ramification had, I thought the base just so here's what I'm thinking uh, first I was thinking that I was just gonna chop maybe do a chop here do a chop here and work this out I hadn't quite figured out what I was gonna do there just recently on one of the other blocks I'm following somebody oh wait a minute I think it might have been on the um, Facebook page for the Sacramento bonsai club there was somebody submitted a photo of a trident maple with a hollowed out feature now i haven't seen a lot of, of uh wood carving on maples because of because of the amount of uh the amount of bleed that happens you know when you do that and you I would worry about exhausting all of its energy plus it probably wouldn't be a good time to do that since i've just done a heavy prune this year but um Having seen that, that opens up an idea. I could maybe, what I was talking about before, would be uh, take this, let, allow this, to just kind of start allowing this to be the new dominant. Cut that back there. Wait and see what comes out here. Maybe let that do the same. Get rid of the handlebarness of it and do a chop there. And then cut that and do a hollow feature to here so that I would get rid of that huge dead space and whenever that rolled over it could roll over into possibly something more natural and then when this grows out this line will be going this way and then we can have a, another line going more that way and then our rim that's kind of what I'm envisioning the problem that I always had with that was that didn't I couldn't figure out how to get away was I just gonna shorten this and have it be a a short straight up in your face nub? Was I gonna turn the tree around and make it and make the make a new front? And what I basically decided was what I just said. I think it would a way out of this would a good way or a possible way out of this would be to cut it right in here and then do some carving. The only carving 
I've done so far on trees and I'm not a big fan of carving as a rule. I mean, I know people who were um, tool time types and um, a big perk for bonsai was uh, some of the tools. I'm like that. I, I like my bonsai tools, but I'm not a power tool not necessarily. But um, I do have a Makita. I do have a Makita router, handheld router. That'll probably be very handy if I wanted to maybe uh, like draw, make a chop, go in the center of that chop and make a dot and then draw a line straight down. Drill that hole straight down into where it went from here to say here where this little fork, natural fork is already. And then with a router bit, start working down until you pick up the hole you drilled and then um, go in and then go in with your uh, with your pliers and your printers and stuff and do a little pull and tug until you get uh, any machine cuts away. That's kind of how I think I would do that. So that was a recent idea, you know, and it's funny that sometimes you think, well, should I do this or should I do that? If I do this, I can't do that later, but I don't know if I should do that, but I should definitely do one of the two. So I'll do this and then think about later for another. And then no sooner do I do this than I go, oh yeah, I could. But you know what? For me to pull that off, the tree doesn't know the difference right now in, in still in dormancy. If I were gonna do all of that right now would be just as good a time as any because this hasn't really taken uh, an effect on the tree. It hasn't lost resources. It doesn't, it's gonna go to wake up stuff and it's not gonna be there and it's gonna make other resources. But as far as that concern, it could just as soon do that with all of those cuts. I'm just not ready to make them without a, uh, without a little bit of, uh, without a little bit of backup, without a little bit of guidance first. So let's not do anything rash, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. A plan is starting to fall together on my trident maple. Uh, when it comes to my uh, Chinese sinensis wisteria, it's doing everything I want it to do. Uh, when I originally potted this, this is the band that comes over. I don't really hide them. I probably should cover them with moss or something in show shape, but I put a twist in it. I don't know if you can see it right here. The idea is, is that when I'm really sure about whether or not everything can stand the leverage, I tend to put a, a line from there to here and then run the tension up and increase the, uh, increase the bend in that trunk. And um, we're going to allow this to fatten up more this year. That was a little sprout that we had last year. It just made that last year. This, uh, I think, is dead. It doesn't necessarily feel dead, but it hasn't, uh, it hasn't really done anything. It made not a single bud last year or the year I got it. So as far as I know, I'm waiting to see that become a dead feature or something. But um, wisteria... Um, dead wood features probably or soft wood and should probably just be cut away and treated at some point but um i'm gonna let the, i'm gonna not water it so that it doesn't rot away super fast and then um let the tree decide how i want to do that a small little stash of two more wisterias and a lemon cypress that i found in the back seat of a lift car uh christmas eve when every i was bringing people home from there on my lift job, people bringing people home from their Christmas parties. I'm looking at you, Cypress. I'm wanting to know how long we're going to be before you start doing things. I mean, it's January. I have no right. I have no right to tap my foot or anything, but I'm really excited. The weather's warm enough, and this stuff is, is uh, starting to increase its water intake. I don't know if the temperature by itself is just causing it to evaporate off that quickly, but uh, it feels to me the amount of water intake for these trees, like they might be, um, their water intake for the trees themselves have taken up, if they're starting to take up the water more quickly, like they're waking up. So that is a, um, 
a crisp morning in Alameda. A quick look at how everybody's doing. I'm about to uh, fill up my my uh, one gallon container and throw some throw some water to these guys. And um, yeah, this is our new Tuesday drop. And thank you so much for watching. And uh, I will see you guys again on our uh, Saturday drop. Oh, no, wait, our Thursday drop. Yeah, get it right. I'll get used to this new system eventually. Um, what have I not done? Oh, we can do a quick look. The uh, little guys here are still hanging out, being little guys. I'm actually showing you these guys. I don't, I'm not really expecting anything for a long time, but, you know, whenever I do a video and I'll walk by it, I'm going to uh, whenever I walk by this and it's dry it's going to get watered and whenever I'm shooting a video and I walk by it I'm going to show you those are uh, our little coastal redwood seeds and back back over here those are our uh, that could be some water those are our acorns I have I did the float test on these guys before I did and it didn't look promising I don't know I collected those acorns fresh and when I did the float test they didn't come out right. I'm thinking that's a hundred percent fail according to the float test. So I thought I would see if I could pop them anyway. And uh, I don't know, maybe if the tree wasn't fail or something. I have no idea. I've never seen so many. I've never seen so many uh, acorns not respond. I mean, usually you see them popping out on the sidewalk sometimes, but um, which is exactly what I did. I put my car. Get, took my car to get a tune-up around the corner and then walked home and then saw what looked to me like fresh tasty good acorns none of them had the most of them you know were okay there weren't a lot of holes in them where they had been um where they had been attacked by anything this little oak is just budding out everywhere go little oak go so anyway that's what's going on with the seeds there's no shortage of trees around here if it didn't go our way this time we'll try again and um, thank you so much for watching.